uh, how was the night rest and how how were our sessions yesterday? Anyone? I don't understand what's happening this morning. Though. Why is everyone just so quiet? <laughs> Good morning. Yesterday's session was it was great. Mm. Okay. Sounds like there's more coming after that. Oh, is that all, Miriam? Yes, that's all. Okay. We're growing, we're developing, we're and enjoying it. You know, it's it's one thing to have to grow, you know, to be obligated to grow, maybe because of changing world circumstances and all of that. It's another thing to enjoy growing. And um, it's amazing to see that we're growing and we're enjoying it. Um, so just a rundown of what we went through yesterday. In the morning, we we went through the principles of art, the things that make art art, um, the things that are going to play behind the scenes of art, you know, and all of that. And then in the evening, we talked about the forms of art, you know, the various tools of expression we have in art. And... Uh, just, I mean, they, they were just foundational. So this morning we'll be going into a little bit of, um, like an, uh, well, I would say partial, but then it's um, not partial. We're, we're going into graphic and visual art, and um, to take us through this session is our esteemed teacher, Toyrat Isuf. So I'm handing over to you, Toyrat. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. It's so nice to have you guys. So I'll just share my screen. Um, so when you can see my screen, just let me know. Yeah, so I think everyone should be seeing my screen right now. So yes. um we're going to, Okay, beautiful. We are going to start this class with um visual arts. So with time I feel like others will join us and um get to joining in the class basically. So um visual arts is an art that is expressed visually. It speaks about the kind of art that can be processed through the eyesight. So when we hear visual, you know, um, seeing our eyes, what we can see comes to the mind, then join it with art. So it becomes art that you can see, that you can express through your eyes. These are art that involves painting, you know, it involves um, drawing, sculpting, you know, there are things that you can see and that can be expressed through your eyes. Basically, art you see. So, um, the origin and morphology of visual art can be traceable to so many cultural and as far back as cave painting, you know, it's part of the things that develop some cultures. So when we think about China, you know, it's the their structure, the way they um do their houses, the way they dress, it comes to our mind. It's different from when we think about Africa. You know, you can see the difference and in this way of living in their development, it's also like an art. You see the Chinese people, they have, their houses are carved in 
the um, the roof of the house is carved in such a way. They have all these red light balls all around the house. You know, they are very artistic. They have their outfits too. You see it. They wear like a kimono, a robe. That is like their culture. But when you look at the African cu- culture too, you see that they, they wear more of like beads. They don't really cover up everywhere, like wearing jackets and kimono. And the environment also speak. You know, that place might be cold. That's why they wear something like that. But Africa is always hot. So you see that we wear, you know, things that are comfortable and we like beads. We like all of this. So these are the differences in the culture. And it's also related to the art of creating it. So basically, visual art is also in with many cultures and um, it plays a big role in the development of these cultures. If you can see the pictures that are here, um, you you will know that in Africa we are even very good when it comes to art. You know, I don't know if you guys know of this batik and um, tie and dye and all of this that they used to create their clothes is still part of the visual art. It's part of their way of living, it's part of their life, it's their outfit, it's their art, basically. Yeah. So, um, visual art also plays a very big part in cultural formation and has been more involved in the definition of many cultures of the world. So, like I said earlier, it's part of what, you know, creates the culture and develops it, basically. Whenever you look around you, you just see art everywhere. So that's just the way it is. Um, Now, why is visual art so important? Now, um, the human eye is able to process about 36,000 pieces of information in a single hour. And the eye can also detect about 10 million different colors. So it is something you see. You know, we control our eyes fine, but then it's just open. You can just see so many things. Imagine how many information you can capture with your eye and how many colors you can see, how beautiful all of this could be. So it's so important because it's something that lives with us. Even if in our house, in our room, you know, when you have your own personal room, like the girls now, they are even more lucky to have their own personal room. You can design it however you like. You can, you know, it could be your own art world. So you you feel like this is my space, and you kind of create whatever you like there. And every day you feed your eyes with that view. So, you know, you won't just say, okay, I want this place blue, I want this place black, and just scatter everything new. You kind of, like, create a symmetry. Even if you are not, like, an art person, it just comes. Okay, I want this room to be pink, then I want a picture here. You are creating a beautiful thing for yourself. That's what you want to be feeding your eye. So, you see that? That way, you're already creating visual art. And it is also very important. When you wake up in the morning, you see everywhere is pink, it's soft, it's lovely, you feel good. But when you wake up, everywhere is just rough. The paint is wrong. Everywhere is scattered. It won't give you that vibe. You know, so it's also a way of living. You understand? It's just part of us, basically. Yeah. So, um, I think we can understand why art is very important. So visual art, basically from that it's all around us you can't do without seeing it in fact it it goes even to fashion you know when you see somebody especially in campus all these girls and all these guys they don't see that in one place and be looking at people's outfits you know when you see some outfits like wow yeah this thing it makes sense she created a type of art with the way she dressed everything is matching everything is beautiful it's sweet to your eyes you love that outfit. When you see another one that will just scatter everything, like, ah, what's this one wearing? But you're about people killing it, you will buy it. So these are the things that show us all around us. It's basically everywhere. So you can't escape, and your eyes is feeding on it. So that's why it's so important for you to do it beautifully, because everybody's seeing it, everybody's loving it. 
basically. And that's another reason why art should not be like that's why art should be recognized, you know. Like we've been saying so far, people see art as something to just, you know, pleasing and something to just okay, art art. Okay, we are an artist. Okay, fine, yeah, okay. That's all. You know, it's meant to be more than that. It's meant to become professional. It's meant to become a way of even becoming, you know, rich, becoming professional, becoming good, solving problems, like our yesterday session where we talk about suicide and all of that. So you see that there is more to it than just art, just seeing it. Now, let's talk about the philosophy of visual art. What you see, you don't doubt it. Like they say, seeing is believing. So therefore, visual art is a tool for cultural reorientation. It can help you change your perception, your belief, and even go as far as setting a standard of oppression. So basically what you are saying here is like visual art is just more than just art. It can change your perception of something. It can change your belief of something. You know, when let me let me give you an example. So like when they say, um, you know, uh, maybe they say this person is not um, somebody that is calm. He's always angry. He's always chaotic. Like a guy now, and maybe you visit him. You check out his space. And you see that his, his room is painted pink and there is cloud everywhere. <laughs> you just be like, wow, is this the guy that they say is very angry? Look at the way he designs his face. Look at the way he's expressing his feeling. It feels calm. It should not have like Barbie or dolls all around. Okay, I know that's weird for a guy, but then you will want to change your thinking or your perspective about the guy. That okay, probably maybe it's not that bad. You know, for someone that is having all these beauty things and that is as calm as this, probably it's not that bad. You know, that's like the like minimal level. But just think of how art can actually change your belief of something. You know, some people might be doing a particular thing and it can it can just make you feel good and you just feel like, wow, this is something I didn't notice before and it might actually change your perspective towards them. So that's how far it can go. Yeah. So um I hope you guys are still with me. I hope you guys are listening. You can just drop your Yes, and... well with you. Yes, you are following. Right. right. So now let's talk about the elements of visual art. So um, elements, when we say elements, we are talking about the things that we use to create this visual art. We are talking of shapes. We are talking of lines. We are talking of space. So shapes in the sense that um, everything is a shape, basically. You look at the house, when you come outside of the house and you look at it, you know, like all this story building is like one long rectangle. Some of that was like a short rectangle, you know. Everything is just shapes basically. So these are the things that we use to create the art. Lines. So I think lines is very important. Lines can basically create anything. It can create a square shape except for circle. But then you get what I mean. Once the two of them come together, you're already getting there, you're already creating something big. And then space. Even the unspoken is spoken of, yeah. So things you can't see, they actually make something. They make a difference. It also says something. Just like when they say silence is like a very big thing. Like you shouldn't think that silence is just silence. They are actually passing a message to you even though they are silent. Like this picture now for space. You can see just the chair there and every other way is blank. This gives me a message. I kind of read something from this. If I see a girl just sitting on that chair, probably folding her arm, I can feel like, okay, this person is feeling, you know, alone or is feeling depressed. You know, she's just alone in an empty space on a chair, folding her arm, looking unhappy. You know, it gives this vibe of something is wrong. But imagine the room is full of people, full of balloons, other children screaming. It will give you the vibe of, okay, there is happiness, there is no problem, all of that. So you see that even space passes a message. That's just one random message I've 
seen from this picture, but then it can be far, it can be more than that. So all of these elements, when you bring them to, together, you have all the tools you need to create something perfect. And there is more. We still have forms. We have texture. So uh, I like texture. It it gives like it gives this vibe. You know, when you when you are looking at a picture, you always want to like feel it. You know, when you go to the museum, I don't know if it's just me, but then when I see a picture, I always want to like feel it and be like, wow, what's this made of? Even when you say a sculpture, you know, you just want to see the texture, feel it. You want to resonate with it, basically. So when you have all of these two together, there is nothing you can't create. Even with just your room self, you're already creating a beautiful world, not to talk of when you have all of the elements you need. But basically, these are just some elements that we use to create visual art. Yeah, so now we still have value and, of course, color. How can I forget color? Color is like the most beautiful thing ever. Just imagine you have shapes, you have lines, and you have color. You are, you are like a magician. You can create anything. All of the art in this world, you can just start. Pew, 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 it's created. So <laughs> I feel like elements are very important. You need to know them. They need to be with you. And then you use it to create something beautiful. All of you as artists, I'm sure that uh, by now you guys know more of this. But then let's say um, for, for teaching now, yeah, just, Look at all of these elements, especially for the poets and code that you you know this is not really your space. This can help you create something beautiful basically it can it's it's all you need, yeah, it's all you need so once you have all the elements, even just two or three, you can create something beautiful, and that is visual art already that's pretty visual art. So um, that will be all for visual art. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions for me? So, questions. Okay, so I think I'm a very good teacher. So that there's no question. That means everybody understands everything. <laughs> So um, I'm going to go real quick to digital art. So it's like the brother of visual art. So um, all of you designers, graphics, and all of that, don't think that we forgot to you know we are here with you. It's also art. Yeah. So since there are no questions, I will just dive into digital art. So um, now what is digital art. Digital art is art made digitally, but then the output may be physical and, you know, it could be, the output could also be digital, but then the tool for creating it was digital. You know, when we were talking about visual, it's something that you do with your eye, like, it's more of like, um, a painting where you have a brush, you have colors, and you kind of create something. But then digital is now going into the other space. It's going to your system. It's going to your smartphone. So basically, something that you create digital, and uh, um, the output can be physical. Like now, um, the graphic designers in the house, you know, you can create a logo can create a professional logo, you can create a flyer, you can create an identity for a company and then with time they print it out as probably flyers, as business cards, as all of that. But then you initially created it on your system, you created it digitally. So um yeah, so that's basically digital art. So uh when you see designers, when you see graphic designers, when you see um flyers they are not just there. They are also at, as far as you are seeing it, you are feeling it, it's looking beautiful, it's still art. Yeah, it's just that it's digital art. 
So, um, what is it? Let's dive into it. Art, digital art. Okay. Um, sorry. Digital art generally depends on the creative powers of the artist. And this is true for digital arts. However, understanding the tool of creating such as the pen or pencil can hinder or foster traditional visual arts. Okay. So, um, and the same is also true for digital arts. Understanding the creation software can better help the artist in creating. So, what are we saying here? We are saying. Digital art depends on how creative or how skilled the artist is. And um, understanding the tools that you use to create it will help you in creating something beautiful. So just like visual art, when we have a pencil or a paintbrush or a canvas, you know, you have to do some training. Even if it's talent, some people are just born with it, you know, like exceptional. But then when you want to get some things, you want to become perfect in some things, you need to know how to use the brush, you need to know how to use the pen, and um, and um, this helps in creating the visual art. So the same thing is with digital art. You need to understand the tools that you want to, to create. Fine, you have a system, you have a smartphone, but then do you understand the tools? And the fact that now it's digital, it might be more complicated. Yeah, so let's talk about some of the tools. So we are looking at um, Adobe software, basically Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and all of that, Art Weavers, Sketchpad. You know, these are tools that we use to create digital art. I'm sure many of us will be familiar with Photoshop, even though we've not used it, but then when I mention Photoshop, you kind of like relate to it. So these are like tools that we use to create digital art. We use Illustrator to create um, professional logos, vectors, and all of that. Yeah. Um, so what we are saying now is you need to know how to use these tools. You need to learn how to use them so as to be perfect in digital art yeah so um digital art is quite vast you know we have different things we are talking of animation we are talking of um, vectors we are talking of pngs images and so many more but then i think you guys can get the idea from what you said understanding what you want to create understanding the tools that you use to create them and then going ahead to create the beautiful art. So I think um, that will be all for digital art. Thank you all for listening again. And um, do you have any questions for me? So any question in terms of visual, digital art, anyone, um, you can ask now. Okay, so no questions. I think we are good to go. Everybody is ready for my own questions. Since there is no question, that means, means if I'll drop hot questions for you guys. So um, now I'm just right now. I'm just going to um, I'm just going to hand over to Mr. Yemi. Yeah, so he can give you guys the questions and um, the breakout room and all of that. So thank you all for listening. I really appreciate Bye. Um, thanks, Oyerat. So we have a very kind of unique assignment this morning because, again, it gets more detailed and... As it gets more detailed, we also need to be more detailed. So we're going to, you know, basically use what we have learned to create 
uh, I just sent a picture to the group. Now, in the breakout sessions, in the breakout sessions, we're supposed to tell a story, tell a story of hope and despair. I'm going to forward that to the group now. So, in your groups, just put together a story of hope and despair together in one piece in that same picture that you're going to see. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, uh, please give me a minute. I didn't get the question. Yeah, priceless. Good morning. I... Good morning. I'm not in any of the groups. No, we've not created yet. We're, we're doing that right away. Press as you were saying. How are you? I just I think that's what you said. That can you come again for the breakout session? So um, we're supposed to tell a story. In so we're looking for um, a common ground. We're looking for common ground between visual art and storytelling. So I'll just forward um, the the what what. So what's it called now? The message. I forwarded the picture to the group. To the group now. It's supposed to guide us. So all the groups are to like analyze this picture and tell a story. So it's basically like looking at it and then using that picture to tell a story. But the story is supposed to inspire hope and despair together at the same time. So it's like on one end of the story there's a lot of hope, and then on the other end there's a lot of hopelessness. Does that make sense now? Yes, I do. Okay, so we're doing... We're doing four rooms. We're doing... We're doing 15 minutes. Now, I want this a little bit more coordinated. Again, because it's, you're telling a story, you need to be able to convince me of the hope, hopefulness and the hopelessness on, on the other end of the image you're seeing or you're analyzing. So one person in the group can share and then every other person goes. So we're doing 15 minutes. Have a great time.
high price list. Yes, sir. Uh, what room were you in? I have no idea. I just my net opened up me out, so I just go back in. Um, do you know the people in your room? No, I wasn't even in the room before my network logged me out. It logged me out while you're still talking. Oh, so I'm going to move you to room three now. Okay.
Yeah, it was good. It was interesting. Interesting. So I know it ended too quickly or what? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yes. Oh, interesting. Um I think we'll still have to do this breakout session again. Uh, one, because I noticed that for many of the groups, you guys were not sharing your screens, and there's no story to tell without a reference, a, an image, you know, or, or do you want us to go right now? Sorry, I didn't get that. I think so, but it to do I think from WhatsApp. So yeah, 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 from WhatsApp. Yeah, from WhatsApp. Oh, so you guys didn't know where the image was from? I need someone to talk to me. I'm, I'm not sure I understand what's going on here. Like, some of us actually went to WhatsApp to look at the image and then come back to discuss it or while discussing it, we were looking at what the image from WhatsApp. I think that was it, at least for my group. Yeah, that, so, that was what we did. Oh, okay. So you guys all saw the image? Yeah, we yeah. did. Okay. Uh, I think we should try. Let's take a shot. Group one. Who's, who's representing group one? Is that my... Hello? Yeah, Kelvin. Yeah. Yeah, it's me, Kelvin. Please go on. Okay. Um, on the picture, we... We actually saw a beautiful girl with bright colors all around her, which depicts the fact that we we are seeing a girl full of hope, full of life, and the color transcends from the the brightness is more much from the front, which is the fact that you have she has so much bright future in front of her, good looking elegant, and all that. But she's caught up in a trap, like those points that um, your dreams are being cut short because of some some challenges, being um, like infringement actually. Now, sometimes we are met with situations that we tie our dreams around them, um, people who are trying to help us, who are trying to push us forward. And we get to this point that probably death occurs. Sometimes it could be um, um, disaster. It could be anything. But I try to cut those dreams short. And and you see tears coming down, rolling down her eyes, which is the fact that she is in this mood no longer happy. She, the, yeah, the world is beautiful around her. The dream is still there. But she's, she's no longer being able to reach out to that dream anymore because she's been trapped and that is the the lines we see cutting across like directly in front of her straight cutting across like a prison um, um, uh, bars so that is to say she is being trapped at that point she has reached and there is there is no there is no strength to go much further in either to reach out the dreams I don't know if we are hearing me Hello. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, basically, if I am the painter, I am actually painting out of emotions, and the emotions for me at that point is the fact that I am not happy. 
probably you are telling your own story or you're trying to tell a story of people around you or how situation around you, how things is. So if it is my country I'm talking about, it's actually telling how youth or people around us in this country are are not reaching out to that point they are supposed to go because of the situation they find around them. It's unpleasant how our country has made so much hopes die down today, bringing out tears instead of joy and laughter. In as much as we have all the resources all around us, beautiful environment for us to be able to reach out to our dreams, but we could not because because of the 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 bad situations around us. And if it is directly me, it could probably be situations that have happened to me in the past or probably what I am facing at that particular moment. And then I'm trying to express it through my art. So art is not just void. We don't paint in a void. We paint out of situation. We paint out of emotions. And sometimes you, you get stories and inspiration from experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Kelvin. That was Kelvin, yeah? Yeah, Kelvin. Thank you, Kelvin. That's, um, that's a good way to, to start. Um, group two. Okay, is anyone here from group two? Who are the people in team two? In the second breakout room. I think Kelvin is actually in group two with us. Oh. I think that was the first presentation. That's oh. what I wanted to say. Kelvin is in group two. He's in group two. So I'm Kelvin, sorry. you guys are I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice. So you guys are also in group two, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And he has spoken for all of you. Yes, yes. Perfect. Yes, yes. What about group one? Um, here. Okay, please go on. Okay, so in group one, we we related the image displayed to um the era of slave trade, where a young lady um go her family no where a young lady's family were victims of um, slave trade and she was able to escape now why she escaped she lost every of her family and relatives now the um in the course of coming out from my high her hideout and realizing um her current predicament she she still had hope of meeting her people. So she would um, sit by the river bank and and um, she would sit by the river bank and ponder on how to get get her family back and that made her um come out come up with strategies like work on herself, develop herself, build herself, and um, give her the quest of going to look for her family. I think that that's basically it. Okay. Thank you, Francis. Uh, is it, okay, then we have group three, yeah. Okay, hi. So I'm speaking for group three. We actually have um, a Chief kind of... Code. What did you say? <laughs> I said you are the cheat code for any, any group you are. They're always <laughs> presenting. <laughs> okay, so we have um, a, like a, fiction, a fictional story for the piece. So we're calling a uh, um, woman in the art, Tinuke, so Tinuke lost her sister recently, and that's her childhood friend. That's that's the person she grew up with, basically. That's the person she has known. That's the person through which she expresses herself. Because 
Tinoke's sister is the outspoken, the audacious one, and Tinoke is the laid back, quiet one. So this is the person who speaks to her heart, who speaks from her heart, who is a medium of expression, who when Tinuke before Tinuke says something, her sister already knows what she wants to say and would interpret it for her. The person who defends her basically. And now she has lost that person. That's her only sister and it's like she has lost her medium of expression forever. And that's the explanation for her face being behind the bar. It's like the way she expresses herself, that, that part that expressive part of her that her sister helps bring out is now locked forever due to the death of her sister. But Tinuka is bright eyed, even though the chairs are falling free, because her sister lives behind a daughter, Omoliri, and Tinuke now calls her Itutojumi because as it is in Yoruba land, when fire goes out, it leaves um its ashes as its replacement and that is what Omoliri is now to her and she the light at that that's basically the light at the end of her tunnel because that's a solace, that's a consolation and the person she must now look forward to, to training and being happy with in place of her sister. That's our submission. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Madam Foy. <laughs> um I think they are very amazing submissions. Uh, I don't think of one or two were very detailed in their discussion. You see, um, we learned about visual art, but you see, one thing we must learn and come to terms also with, after coming to terms to, with the fact that art is more of a solution thing rather than an aesthetic thing, we need to come to terms with the fact that there is no art that is self-existent. Um, there's no art that's self-existent, you know. There's no form of art that's self-existent. And the broader you can relate it to other forms of art, the better you can express it. Now, we're speaking, uh, or so, rather, we're taking an image. I will try to tell a story about it. Right now, I think I can even see. Tinuke can, he can, he can, <laughs> he can jump off the top of my head right now because of the story and what I've heard, and because of what I've seen. Um, so I led us through the lines of um, visual art and graphic art and all of that, and, all. and I know that many of us are in that line already. But we need to start learning to collaborate with other artists, other creatives. You can tell stories about your art. You can, you can paint digital images about your art. You can... I mean, you can, you can see, the world is your oyster. That's again another thing we found with creatives. We tend to want to go solo. You know, we don't like a lot of collaboration. We prefer, I mean, we prefer that, uh, I mean, because it's my creative thing and it's personal to you, you feel like other people can't relate to it. And yet, they might not be able to relate to it, but they can give you a better perspective. Uh, that said, this evening we'll be going through the business of art, and that I believe that might be like um, the highlight. Tomorrow we'll be going into NFTs, and then in the evening tomorrow we'll have personal presentations. Uh, against tomorrow evening, we have said that um, yesterday we're going to have projects, and then it will be good projects. We said the project or the hypothetical project yesterday was that you're recommending to the government what they could do, what forms of art they could bring together to to combat the rate of suicide in the, in the community or in the, in the society. Now we're going to send some groupings this morning. With those groupings, whatever group you fall on, uh, discuss strategize, maybe be WhatsApp calls to each other or something. But please keep your discussions strictly about what we're talking about. Uh, we found that some of us tend to want to go out of school 
and all of that. And I understand um, this is not the place to come and look for. Um, I mean, if it happens, fine. But this is not the place to come and look for a romantic relationship or other things. No, please. This is not the place to come and look for money. This is the place to own your creative skills and better it. You know. So please keep the, your discussion strictly professional or strictly within the context of what we're talking about. And if you have any issues in that line, please. Um, can let um, Toyota or myself know what you said. He's also on the call here. Uh, we'll be able to attend to it. So we'll group us. We'll send our groupings on the group very soon. Whatever group you follow, I want us to meet, recommend solutions, and actually develop a solution. It might be a solution in, in form of a story. It could be a solution in form of a painting. It could be a solution in form of a drawing. It could be a solution in form of um, a video. Whatever you can think of. Again, as long as there is imagination, there can be creation. So please imagine it, collaborate, and then something together because that would be like the final piece of assessment for tomorrow evening. But that, that by the way, this evening we're still going through the business of art. Uh, I think that um, it would be unfair to address this because we've let some art um, forms out. Again, this is just a three days course. It can't. It can't. Um, I don't think we can. We can cover a broader scope than what we are covering right now. So, for people in poetry, people in photography, people in um, in uh, architecture people in fashion were sorry, but the things you learn here, if you apply them to your art, to your own kind of art, you get better at it. And no one is an island. We would advise that you probably go for a, a longer course, and then we'll talk more about that tomorrow as well. But please just be invested in this, give it your best. And give it your all, and then we see in the evening. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank yes. you very much. Sir. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Kelvin. So please, I'll see you all in the evening, 7 p.m. in the evening. This evening session. Um, oh, you have a question? Please go on. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Can you help us drop the topic also on the WhatsApp platform? Hello? Yes, yeah, that was what I was going to say. Uh, by the topic, do you mean the for the project tomorrow that we are working yes. towards yes. tomorrow? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. You can do that. Okay, I have my last question, sorry. Hello? Let's go on. All right. Go on, please. Do we feel that at any point in time in in this life, visual art is going to take the place of traditional art? Because we I, we debated seriously. Do we what? I said, do we think that at any point in time in this life, visual art, like the way computer the computer edge is going, are you getting me? Yeah, like a lot of, of things are going digital and all that. Like, do you feel digi digital art is going to one day take the place of traditional art? Hmm. You're, you're coming into the philosophies of art. Yes, because we, um, actually, we actually debated on this thing when we, we met at a competition, like Life in My City Art competition. And like few of us, we were together. We debated on this thing for hours, like arguing on this. So, I would want to have an opinion from you also. Um, okay, so let's say this. Uh, there are software now that can write stories for you. Chat GPT. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, there are a couple of them, even apart from Chat GPT. There are 
software now that can make uh, cartoons of your image. You know, that can basically do something close to what you do. You know. But you see, the thing is this. As much as those things are advancing, personally, and this is not a professional opinion, personally I feel like traditional art is already more rooted than to go away anytime soon. I mean, the opening up of the world into digital art is, is also a very great thing. Uh, it's a very great thing, but traditional art is going to stay for a very, very long time as compared to digital art. Because, again, that's part of the philosophies of art. The longer it stays, the longer the value. It's like wine. The longer it stays, it gets better. You know, the longer it stays, the better it gets. So, Traditional art is not going anytime soon, but it might need to be revamped. It's like cultural reorientation. There are certain cultures that we were practicing before now that we might need to just look away. And then another thing I believe lies in the future is um, a collaboration of traditional and digital art. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. It does. And I think those days are not far from us where we start seeing a lot of collaboration, a lot of artworks that, that came together to be a marriage of traditional and physical um, or, or, or digital art rather. That's it, thank you. Is there any other person that has a question? Um, okay, that's it. I just want to make a comment. Um, oh. I don't know if there will be time for us to discuss something like this, maybe after the training. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you find time for us to discuss it. Because I think it's a very important topic, and a lot of people are interested in it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Add it to the curriculum or something. Um, Khadija, could you please do me a message as to that effect, or to try you as a message? Okay, okay, sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any other person or any other thing? Okay, I'll see you all in the evening, 7 p.m. Enjoy your day. Um, you'll see the groupings very soon on the group and um, the assignments as well, so start working on this. Um, Again, don't wait for anybody. Somebody can just take the lead and start the conversations. I'll see you all.